Last week was fantastic and dramatic, even by NFL standards. The Dolphins branded a team with 70, Taylor Swift went to a Chiefs game, and the Cardinals aren't the worst team in the NFL after all. Who knew? Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Shut Up Football. I'm Jeff Stoltzfus. That's Kevin. If you're new to the channel, this is the Weekly Roast, where we make inappropriate jokes about everything and anything from the previous week's NFL matchups. And then... We hand out a soft pretzel at the end. Pretty standard, really. We're already into week three, and I still haven't been canceled by YouTube or otherwise. I have, however, gotten multiple copyright strikes for using NFL content. Is this the week I figure out how to circumnavigate that? It is not, no, because I'm, I'm literally hashtagging this with NFL. It doesn't take a pack of bloodhounds to find me. Let's get into it. It's time for the roast. <laughs> It's just your standard pre-game flyover by the Air Force. But if I didn't know any better, I'd swear Levi's Stadium just launched countermeasures. Nick Bosa grabbed Daniel Jones and planted him face first in the end zone like the bulb of a peony. See you after winter when you bloom, you beautiful springtime flower. Rock, paper, kid will shoot. Daniel Jones looked at the Niners D like it was Chinese arithmetic. Well, I don't like any of this. Graham Gano drilled a kick and his face might as well have worn a suit because it was all business. I must break you. The refs got involved early in this game, but curiously, no one Trent Williams punched Ashawn Robinson in the face. Is it something against Ashawn, or are you simply a bad ref? When you're a ref, it's generally not good when you're trending on Twitter after the game. The Grinch was there, and he was wearing a sombrero. I had no idea he was Mexican. I've never seen him outside a Home Depot. Brock Purdy and Daniel Jones look like every picture I've ever seen of the men who went off to fight World War II for us. What are you doing in color? Coach Dable was being tickled by an invisible man, and he knocked him the fuck out. He was screaming at the refs, but if he was mad, he should have grabbed a magic marker and filled in their stripes. They hate that shit. The stadium was filled with the raucous ruckus of the Lions faithful and one very unimpressed Falcons fan. Jack Campbell sacked Desmond Ritter and never slowed down after the fact. Usually, you at least take a peek at Roadkill. He didn't even check the rear view with a shrug. I can only assume he went directly to the production office, printed off a copy of the play that just happened, and posted it in his locker, only to draw a big red heart around Ritter's crumpled body. Jared Goff scampered for a touchdown, but he absolutely did not have the hops to reach the fans. Maybe he should have gotten one of those collapsible stepladders, like when children need to reach the sink, or well-placed mini trampoline. Aiden Hutchinson had a bag of sacks and a pant full of stanky legs. He danced the night away until the Olds tried to get in on it. You ruin everything, Olds. Brian Branch took Bijan Robinson's head off. Another brilliant play by the Rook. You can't get brain damage if you don't have a head. And here's Vikings quarterback and local Coles mannequin, Kirk Cousins. TJ Hawkinson made a huge catch up the middle, but the defender ripped it clean like a Brazilian wax job. Keenan Allen threw a touchdown pass because there's nothing the Chargers can't do except finish a game with a healthy Mike Williams. Justin Jefferson scored a touchdown and looked like an airplane on the approach to a DUI. Itty bitty shitty gritty committee. Another complex offensive strategy executed by the Chargers. Bounced the ball off a defender's hands straight to the receiver. The Vikings squandered the remaining seconds only to get picked off. But they learned a very valuable lesson. It's hard to fix a flat if you refuse to pull over. On fourth down, the Packers try to trick play, I assume is called, everybody sucks and we're all going to die trying. Drop the ball, run around like your ping ping is on fire, slip and tear your perineum in two like a moist towelette before launching the ball to no one. Classic. I don't know why I have to find somewhere to eat. I'm the quarterback. Seems like it should be somebody else's job. Rashid Shahid returned a punt for a touchdown, and a special teams coordinator did the dance of his people. All right, I found a buffet. Everybody's happy. You like chicken? Yeah, you do. Steak? Whatever vegans eat? Carr left this game injured. They said he avoided disaster, but the same can't be said for Saints fans, as you know what that means. Y'all want to eat dubs? Fuck. Love found Romeo Dobbs for a touchdown. Master gave Dobby a gift? Dobby is free! The Packers missed a field goal, and the come from behind was complete. Go ahead, it's over. Air out those pits. Sure, Trevor Lawrence makes this look good, but when I wear it, it's not appropriate for a briss. CJ Stroud was seeing the field clearly. Ooh! He found Tank Dell deep in the middle of a jag off. 
Texans fullback Andrew Beck bobbled a punt and then returned it 90 yards in only 90 seconds, dodging bodies like wrenches along the way. Will Anderson burst through and blocked a field goal. Scramble! Scramble like a pinata of your parents' approval just opened on the floor. You're a constant disappointment and their love is the candy. Everything's gonna be different this year, they said. We've got Sean Payton, they said. Tua came out finger-banging, and we should have all known what's up. Armageddon. As in, I'm getting tired of counting all these touchdowns the Dolphins scored. They scored 70 points. 70! 70. 70. Tyreek Hill, Raheem Mostert, and rookie Devon A. Chain couldn't be stopped. Tua Tunga Vailoa wasn't even looking at the passes he threw. Guys were coming off the bench, maybe even out of retirement just to dance. Their mascot was flexing, and why not? He probably could have run one in too. The Broncos' defense was for display purposes only. You're not supposed to play with it. Even the backup players were scoring touchdowns. Mike White threw a touchdown to the ironically named Chosen. Devon A-Chain had over 200 yards and four touchdowns. He left a pile of bodies behind him, including statisticians. CBS ran out of numbers. They had to whore out Trent Green to ESPN to get more. The Dolphins scored so often, I think they actually got tired of celebrating. At one point, Devon A. Chain simply sat down and read a cookbook. The Broncos tumbled down the NFL rankings so hard, they tore a hole in the space-time continuum and their shorts. Sean Payton should be forced to play Kevin James in a movie. Taking it on the chin here in Cleveland. I was able to strap it on and play Monday night. Do I even need to be here? Welcome back to the Browns, Cream Hunt. Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa made a very big tackle and then pushed a very small shopping cart. Deshaun Watson was making plays, but the Titans found a sneaky way to stop him. Just face him in the opposite direction. It worked for all of one play. At the end of the second quarter, Amari Cooper was ruled out of bounds. Except he wasn't! There was plenty of grass between him and the sideline. Very mowable grass. What was this guy even looking at? There's literally no one in a better position to see this. If they can drug test the players, they should drug test the refs too. At least give us a recommendation. If I see this shit two months from now on a Lens Crafters commercial, I'm going to lose my mind. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Jonathan Allen riled up his team with a speech about how hands work. I forget the specifics, but he absolutely sold it. Sam Howell had the longest, slowest, stumbling run for a first down. He was like a drunk uncle at the end of Thanksgiving, looking for his favorite niece. One fan really brought that I don't feel safe energy. And if you think this is bad, you should have seen him earlier at the urinal. The Bills sacked Sam Howell nine times and forced multiple interceptions. This week, the shortest, dumbest interception belongs to Sam Howell. He tried to throw it over a man who was 6'6 and less than 10 feet away from his face. For those with fingers and toes, that's four interceptions for Sam Howe. What's he even looking at on that tablet this late? LinkedIn? The Colts swapped out their field goal package and forced the Ravens to burn a timeout. They tried it again, but the Ravens took their sweet-ass time substituting personnel, and it drew a delay of game penalty. Holy crap, this is exciting! This must be how a notary feels on a busy day. Gardner Minshew stepped out the back of the end zone, and somewhere, Dan Orlovsky was cheering. But it doesn't help when everybody calls it doing a Dan Orlovsky. It's not the same as when they name a sandwich after you. Matt Gay nailed four 50-plus yard field goals, including the game winner in OT. It was the best gay connection I've seen since that one time in college. This week in NFL fashion, Ezekiel Elliott arrived looking like he just came from a business meeting about a church picnic, and Trent Brown looked like he was there to help a friend move a couch. Matthew Judon wore a vest with the most amount of pouches I've ever seen. It was a Boy Scout's wet dream. Where's my compass? Which one? Whoever painted the end zone should have put up some cones or a scarecrow because people trounced all over it. Or maybe Antonio Brown never left. He's just been stuck on repeat doing shirtless donuts in the end zone this whole time. I think we both know that's a very real possibility and not even the top 10 weirdest Antonio Brown story. Mac Jones got in a tussle. He was accused of giving Sauce Gardner a peeny punch. And don't act surprised. He's been known to fly south of the border before. Don't shot! The Patriots were treating Wilson like a Denny's breakfast, smothered and covered, and leading to heart failure. It's bad enough the Jets were losing games. Now their fans are losing their teeth? Zach Wilson showed some initiative and tackled himself. Or maybe it was that damn ghost Sam Darnold was talking about. Same ghosts. The Jets are haunted. Who are you gonna call? Kirk Cousins? 
Redfin and Zillow numbers must be off the charts as Jets fans all move to late stage alcoholism. Even when something positive happens, they're all like, Ooh. Zach Wilson threw a Hail Mary, and he was more likely to find God than a touchdown in this game. Still, the mere fact that they had a chance to win this game after all that should have given Bill Belichick cause to wrestle with his own mortality. DJ Chark had a sweet move for a touchdown, and then, what has two legs, big teeth, and a steadfast rhythm? Baby dinosaur dance. The Panthers were flagged for offsides eight times. The twelfth man is real, although really, it should be the twelfth person. He and or she with his or her noise, by they, them, and I self-identify as inclusive but completely confused. Pete Carroll was jazzed to the tits, pumping up the fans. I haven't seen a crowd this hyped up by an old man since January 6th. The Seahawks went for two, and Gino took off again, spinning and running in the wrong direction, lost in a labyrinth of his own making. Gino Smith would make for a terrible GPS. Sure, you'd get where you want to go, but you'd spin aimlessly for two minutes, breach the backyards of no less than three cul-de-sacs, and fall up four waterfalls. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Taylor Swift is in the building! Finally, evidence of what we all knew. Taylor Swift is dating Travis Kelsey's mom. It's the power couple we all wanted. Get her, Donna! I'm not saying Taylor won't eventually end up with Travis, but she's absolutely burning through that wrinkled muff to get there. Not to be outdone, the Bears tight end, whoever the fuck that is, is now dating the entirety of Duran Duran. Oh yeah, and there was football at this game too. The playing of this game was strictly a formality for fantasy purposes. At no point were the Bears capable of winning this. They'd had better luck fighting actual Bears. Fox kept cutting to the Bears' sideline, almost like a police lineup of who's to blame. Or maybe inadvertently creating an alibi for an elaborate heist going on cross town. It would make more sense if this team was actually an elite group of criminals involved in a high-level confidence scheme, because they sure aren't much at football. Fields eventually hit DJ Moore with a touchdown, and it must have stunned him. The Chiefs won, but nobody won more than Travis Kelsey. His prize? No less than three future Grammy-winning songs about everything that's wrong with you. Some analysts said the Cowboys were the best team in the league, but I have jokes too. It turns out the Cowboys are vulnerable outside of North Jersey area codes. It was hardly iron sharpening iron after back-to-back -back weeks of Daniel Jones and Zach Wilson. They made Joshua Dobbs look like Michael Vick. James Conner was a triple patty whopper, too much beef for the Cowboys' mouth. Jonathan Gannon looks like what an AI would generate if you were to type in bouncer at a cheesecake factory. The Cardinals stayed on top through three quarters, giving them ample time to find a way to piss this game away. But it never happened. Dak was picked off at the goal line and taunted by a first win team. The Cardinals dumped water on Jonathan Gannon, proof indeed that he was not a secret mermaid. Welcome to Vegas. Lil Wheezy was there. Is that right? Little, Lil Nucci? Lil, Lil, uh... Stuart Little was there. Max Crosby was flagged for dragging a man. That's illegal? What if he drags him to a nice steak dinner? Let him finish. Kenny Pickett scrambled, and George Pickens threw a block with the stopping power of that gust of air conditioning when you walk into a grocery store. Jimmy G threw Jimmy three interceptions. Not very handsome. Unfortunately, I forgot my terrible towel. It's in the terrible wash. They showed DeAndre Swift's dad working out, and if an asteroid ever threatens Earth, I'd volunteer this man to throw something at it. Hertz had enough time to cook a turkey dinner in the pocket before finding Alameda Zacchaeus for a touchdown. Safety Reed Blankenship picked off Baker Mayfield, but he abandoned his dance after. Get back out there and dance, white boy. Commit to the bit. Florida started the sweat. DeAndre Swift has been more explosive than a Chipotle restroom, and just as runny. I love Kenny Gainwell, but he should only come on the field to see if DeAndre Swift needs a drink or someone to talk to. The Eagles got a safety, and Darius Slay saw his opportunity to pitch his one-man show, Baby Shark the Musical. Ojo Cinco was in the building, and so was his dad. I know this is Ohio, but that is a lot of white. Tutu Atwell took one to the house, but his tutus touched out of bounds. Joe Mixon scored a touchdown, and the crowd ate him. Twelfth man? I'd say that's cultural appropriation, but I have no idea what Cincinnati is known for. We'll let them have something. Oh, sweet Pita Gita, a choreographed dance? It ain't even my birthday. Burrow threw an interception, but don't blame him. Akello Witherspoon was like a prom date. He only needed one hand to get the job done. Hey there, kiddo. You want to go for ice cream after this? Mm-hmm. 
And now it's time for the soft pretzel of the week. Yummy. This week, the pretzel goes to Mike McDaniel. I have to be a Denver Bronco football player. I, I cannot, my life will not be successful if I don't play professionally. He put up 70 last week and he could have made it 73. That's an amazing accomplishment. I played that clip of young McD not because it's funny, but because life is funny. Life is not a straight line. And I find it interesting that the further you get from the starting line, the more the finish line changes. This is for you, Mike. If you'd like to help this channel grow, please make sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment. Subscriber comments are the fuel that keeps me making more. I do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching Shut Up Football. We'll catch you next time. Peace! Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. It sound right, boy. Would it make me sound taller if I stood up? Hamburger, hamburger, hamburger. Mm hmm.